First of all, I would like to thank Professor Jiben Rock for giving me this opportunity. This is a great honor for me. My topic is the change of interarticular findings after PAO. This is my disclosure. So as we know, PAOs, including Baronese osteotomies and others, are established procedures to treat a patient with symptomatic dysplasia. Also, the goal is the same. We traditionally have performed PAO with a lateral approach, named the transposition osteotomy of the acetabulum, TOA. Professor Nishio reported in 1956. In the 1990s, we just observed the intraarticular findings during the osteotomy, and we found high prevalence of cartilage and labrum degeneration. And we also reported that the advanced lesion led to the inferior outcome of TOA. So in particular cases, we did the second look arthroscopy. Some, some showed improvement, and some showed unchanged findings. So here, 16 years old girl, bilateral dysplasia, 10th grade zero. Her left hip showed the cartilage was good, but the labrum was detached at the anterior superior lesion like this. At 1.5 years opera uh, initial operation, again, cartilage was good, but the uh, labrum detached like this although she was free from the pain. So these findings raise the questions, do interarticular findings change, change after PAO? Do the changes have any effect on the long-term survival of the hip? The purposes of this study is to determine the prevalence and distribution of interarticular lesions in hip dysplasia change of uh, interarticular lesions after TAO, and whether change of the interarticular lesions affect long-term clinical result. So from 1990 to 2001, TOA with arthroscopy were performed in 139 hips in 126 patients. After this exclusion, 72 hips in 44, uh, excuse me, 64 patients were analyzed. The mean age at operation was 38 years old, and 10th grade were zero in 20 patients, 20 hips, and one in 40 hips, and two in 12 hips. We made a small incision to the capsule for the arthroscopy during the TOA, and the interval between first and second look was 1.7 years on average. ICRS classification was used for the cartilage degener degenerations. And we simply classified the labrum region into four categories, normal, superficial, partial, and full thickness tear. The so location of the femoral head and the acetabulum were divided into three zones, anterior superior, a superior, and posterior superior. So improvement was defined as a decrease of the ICRS or labrum grade by fibro cartilage formation in more than 50% of the lesions. Deterioration was defined as an increase of the ICRS or labrum grade or extension of the lesions. Out of the 64 patients, so 50 patients, 58 hips were followed for more than 10 years. So failure was defined as advancement to the tennis grade three or conversion to THA. So multivariate analysis were used to determine the possible risk factor for the failure, including demographic, 
radiographic and arthroscopic factors. So as for the acetabular cartilage, anterior superior lesions were at the most frequent and severe area followed by superior and posterior area. So 93% of the hips had lesions in total. As for the femoral head, the same tendency was observed, however, they were less frequent and less severe. As for the labrum, more than half of the hips had a full sickness tear at the anterior superior area, and 97% of the hip had labrum regions in total. So how about the second look? As for acetabular cartilage, 73% showed unchanged lesions. So improvement was observed by 25% and 27% in tennis grade one and two, respectively. As for the femoral head, 76% showed unchanged findings. So some improvement, but more deterioration in tennis too. As for the labrum, 79% showed unchanged findings. So let me move to the long-term result. At the mean of 18 years after osteotomy, failure was observed in 13 hips, which is 90%. So survival rate showed the 20 years survival was 77.3%. When divided into tennis grade, tennis zero showed 100%, one showed 79%, and two showed 45% at 20 years. So what is the risk factor for the failure? Older age was associated with failure of TRA. Tennis two and the fair or poor joint congruity are significant. And the subchondral bone exposure of the femoral head was also a risk factor. But the short-term change of interarticular lesions was not associated with long-term result of the TOA. So multivariate analysis showed subchondral bone exposure advanced to the femoral head was an independent risk factor for the failure of TOA. So intraarticular lesions in hip dysphagia generally originate in the anterior superior area of the acetabulum and followed by femoral side. It is possible due to the anatomical weakness of labral cartilage complex in the anterior superior regions. Interarticular lesions were unchanged in the majority of the patient at the second look. So Suzuki also reported articular cartilage was found unchanged in most of cases after conventional osteotomies like this. So short-term change of interarticular regions was not associated with long-term result of TOA. So these four factors were associated with a failure. So we can say PAO has limited ability to repair interarticular regions, especially in case with advanced stage. OA may progress in hips where regions have already advanced to the point of femoral subchondral bone exposure at the time of POA. So in conclusion, intraarticular lesions originate in the anterior superior area of the acetabulum followed by the femoral side. Intraarticular lesions were unchanged in the more than 70% of the patient at the mean 1.7 years after osteotomy. Short-term postoperative change of intraarticular lesions was not associated with the long-term result of the TOA. So ICRS grade four at the osteotomy in the femoral head 
was an independent risk factor for the failure of TOA. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 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 Mm.